good morning everyone welcome thank you for connecting on this call where we are studying about the prophetic ministry we'll continue to learn about personal prophecy today uh, let's get started with the word of prayer i want to request uh, one of us here on the call to please lead in prayer let's pray Okay. Father Almighty God, we give you thank. We thank you for a gift of life. Thank you for bringing us today again. We thank you for the grace to attend the class. Father, Lord King of Glory, let your ministering angels come and guide us, protect us, give us wisdom and understanding. We also pray for our colleagues who have not jo yet joined that Lord quicken their step to join. We pray all this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Paul. Uh, in the last class, we talked about how to hear from God. And we said that the spirit also has senses, at least five or even more. And we said that each of those senses is able to perceive uh, the message from God. And then, you know, as it comes into our spirit, uh, we can then, you know, uh, use the soul part of us for the analysis, the reasoning, the understanding, and then comes the action steps. So uh, we also went through, uh, you know, sometimes seeking the Lord, getting words from one another, and uh, that's how we actually flow uh, in prophecy. And the more we practice hearing from God, the better we get at it. So today we are in chapter 10 where we want to understand how to interpret, okay, test it. First of all, test the prophetic word, which has been released to us, and then go ahead and interpret. Because we said that the word of God comes to us in parts. It comes to us in the form of symbols, in the form of dark sayings. So we must interpret the message that God is trying to convey. Uh, so as we look at, the prophetic word, uh, we know that there is a process involved. And in that process uh, of, of receiving the prophetic word, there are a couple of um, uh, elements that can be enumerated, such as revelation, presentation, interpretation, application, timing, and confirmation. So we will discuss each one of these in detail. So firstly, Coming to revelation or the origin of the prophecy, where does the prophetic word arise? So that's important to ask. Whenever we hear a prophetic word, a genuine prophetic word, it should be from the Lord because it's the Spirit of God who is communicating uh, to us. But then sometimes what happens is uh, people of their own mind, of their own um imagination, their own thoughts can also convey a word. Now, if we take that as a prophetic word, obviously God has no obligation to fulfill such a word. He uh, gets ready to perform his word, not the imagination of man. And so uh, we must try to distinguish between, uh, you know, a word from man and a word from God. So the source can be God. The source can even be man. You know, there are passages of uh, scripture where God warned the people. We've seen some of these earlier in Jeremiah 14, 14. He says, and the Lord said to me, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. I have not sent them commanded them, nor spoken to them. They prophesy to you a false vision, divination, a worthless thing, and the deceit of their heart. So you see there, uh, it's not a genuine word from God, but it's coming from the hearts of the prophets. So uh, we must be careful. There are other passages, I'm not reading all of them, but uh, we understand. One source is God, and uh, that's that's what we want to stick to. But when there is a message coming from uh, a person's heart, we should be able to discern it and not take it up as a prophetic word. Now, the third source for a prophetic word is a lying spirit or a false spirit, a spirit of divination. Uh, so, you know, there are 
various names that you can give to a demonic spirit which gives forth uh, prophetic words so here are the three sources one is god one is people the other is uh, demonic spirits or false spirits so our intention is to discern a word which is coming from the lord now coming to presentation presentation so i've heard a word and i know that it's genuinely from the lord i now have to communicate it or put it across so that would uh, mean my method of presenting it so in the method of presenting it there is a human element involved so this human element has to do with the personality of the person the way they communicate uh, uh, and uh, so a lot depends on the person who's communicating the word now one thing we must understand is that god will not uh, take control and take charge of of our uh, human faculties and push us to minister in a certain way that completely depends on the individual uh, like we've seen the scripture in first corinthians 14 and verse 32 where we understood that the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet so a person can control or they can regulate how they want to share a message now if i want i can shout out a message or if i want i can talk softly or i can you know uh, put it in a simple way or if i want to make it sound very grand i can kind of spice it up you know in my communication so uh, it it depends on the delivery of the individual so one must be careful to make sure it's put across in a manner that is uh, that can be received by others okay and uh, also that we don't tamper with the actual message of the word which god wants to convey so these things we must keep in mind as we uh, present the prophetic word and now that we understand this uh, it also helps us stay cautious because yes the word of god the prophetic word can come from god like we've been saying the gift is genuine the gift is perfect but the human vessel is the carrier of that word so when somebody gives us a prophetic word we still have to check whether entirely it is from the lord or are there parts or portions of the prophetic word uh, which due to the communication of the individual or the presentation of the individual are slightly you know altered so we can also be cautious so i'm just going to go on with this but feel free interrupt me at any point if you have doubts pertaining to that particular section so we said that revelation uh, and then you know uh, presentation now coming to the interpretation part of the prophetic word so what is interpretation interpretation is the uh, understanding of the meaning of the prophetic word and testing it out you know whether uh, actually the uh, the the word is you know what this person is presenting it to be so why do we require interpretation okay that's the first question now we know that uh, prophecy has a lot of imagery in it uh, like those you know we we talked about uh, visions god said in hosea 12 10 i have multiplied visions i have given symbols uh, through the witnesses of the prophets and numbers 12 uh, we we saw how you know it talks about uh god speaking to moses directly but then he him giving vision and dream to the others so because god speaks in this way in a in a imagery uh we have to then try to uh, get the meaning out of it so interpretation of what interpretation of symbols interpretation of the parables interpretation of some kind of comparisons dark sayings in our uh, you know what we are receiving uh, that becomes very important so uh, if we miss in the area of interpretation the meaning of what god is saying can be completely different 
for example one could see uh, a car in their prophetic word okay and a person standing next to the car so when we see this image there are so many things we could interpret this as we could say that the person has bought a new car or his car is under repair or the car was stolen or he uh, uh, is going to gift the car to someone or he's going to start a car business so you see there are umpteen interpretations of one image and which is why the right interpretation is important and once you have the right interpretation of what exactly that is uh, then the application will follow and the person will be able to apply it in the proper way so when we see the image you know it's like saying we are seeing but one must also hear from god so as we are looking at this image you know we ask the spirit of the lord to minister to our hearts and uh, by the holy spirit he will put it in our hearts okay it's actually that this person is going to start a car business so you tell him that and you pray with him so that's how one would actually come to interpret a uh, image that they are seeing now uh, while interpreting right these uh, images it's it's like some of the messages that god is speaking can feel quite overwhelming for example when a message came to mary that she is going to be uh, the mother of uh, jesus she said how can it be a child will be born of the holy spirit she says how can it be so we don't fully understand you know how god could say certain things maybe at a, a point in time it's unbelievable to hear a word like that but uh, if it's a genuine prophetic word no matter what you know meaning it conveys we have to just go ahead and release it because we have talked about the fact that the prophetic word will bring encouragement isn't it encouragement edification exhortation to the individual and it carries the power to do what god wants it to do so uh, after having interpreted it and released it hopefully the response which an individual will have is to believe the prophetic word remember in first second chronicles 2020 uh, we have a call believe in the lord your god and you shall be established believe his prophets and you shall prosper so uh, believing the prophetic word is what uh, you know one must do to receive the fullness of the message and also to have an attitude like mary when she said be it unto me according to your word so she yielded herself completely to the prophetic word so you see action depends believing acting uh, on the prophetic word and thereby the interpretation of the prophetic word is very very uh, important or rather the accuracy of the uh, uh, interpretation so action will depend on that all right so few more things uh, with regard to uh, you know interpreting the prophetic word when we share a prophetic word uh, yeah uh, it also is important for us to note that okay when the message being carried is let's say uh, the image that we saw there is a person uh, they have a car business and uh, god is saying that you would be very successful in your uh, car business so this is the message which is coming through uh, uh, however even the things which are unsaid right in the in the uh, in that message now let's say god is talking about a car business but then there are when you're talking about a business there will be hard work there will be diligence uh there, there needs to be wisdom there need to be good decisions so many things are unsaid uh but we must remember that we are interpreting you know some part of it and we are giving it to the person but there's actually so much more that the person needs to do to be able to really uh be successful or effective in that business but we are interpreting the part that we are getting and we are telling the person okay uh, now yeah uh, the final thing about interpretation is if the prophetic word is not interpreted correctly 
then it will make uh, uh, like it doesn't produce fruit in the other person's life because you know for example uh, same thing same uh, example that we can uh, take that we are looking at a person and when we are praying for them we get some musical notes uh, somewhere maybe a musical note next to them and uh, we feel that god is saying there is a connection of music with this person so now if that person is not musically skilled and i say something like uh, uh, leave everything go and join a music academy uh, learn music it will hinder that person's you know actual calling because they are not skilled musically and here i am giving a wrong interpretation to the message so people get affected when we interpret things wrongly now god might just be saying that uh, you're going to join uh, in a company as an hr and the company is a music company or uh, you're a business person you're going to sell instruments you see there's still a connection of music and the person but it's not what we are thinking it is so wrong interpretation generally leads to problems and so what one can do is to check out the prophetic word so uh, in in the case of uh, confusion you can go to a more mature person and uh, uh, request them hey th i'm seeing this and i feel this way do you think this is what god is saying and then uh, share the prophetic word so that it is not applied wrongly so that's about uh, a little bit about the interpretation of the prophetic word right so let's uh, keep moving on so we said that uh, the prophetic word must be interpreted correctly now the prophetic word must also be tested why test the prophetic word any uh, any thoughts on that why should we test the prophetic word we can just take it right prophecy is from the lord We need to test whether it is uh, uh, genuine or the quality of the word, whether it is uh, taking us, as you had mentioned earlier, like taking us towards God or taking us away from God, like in that sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah true, true. Yeah, so we see whether uh, it's fulfilling its purpose, which is to draw us close to God. And also uh, today we talked about the source, isn't it? We said, a word can be from the Lord or it can just be uh, something from the imagination of people uh, or even a demon spirit. So then I have to really test what is being spoken. And that's why testing it is important. And we must not look at it as uh, being uh, put down, let down or judged. Uh, in First Thessalonians 5 and verse 21, it says, Do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast. To what is good so we must test it test is whether it is genuine or not whether it is from the lord or not so that's what we mean uh, and interpretation also whether the interpretation is accurate or not so these are the questions we are asking when we are testing a prophetic word uh, so how do we test it so the first test obviously is to check whether a prophetic word is aligned to the written word of god so the written word of god should be the highest standard there should be no i mean there cannot be any prophetic word which is above the written word of god so if there is a prophetic word and i think i gave you some examples uh, like you can't have a prophetic word which says okay go be a robin hood go steal the bank and you know uh, help the poor uh, it cannot be because it goes against the nature of god where god said in his word he spoke and said be holy as i am holy so how can we reconcile you know uh, uh, stealing or anything else any false false things that draw us away from the character of god as a prophetic word but there are words going around uh, which don't align to the scriptures and yet people put their faith in them and uh, trust in them so this is our first and main test does it align itself to the written word of god then we also ask the question what divya was uh, sharing does this word move me closer to god 
and his will for my life or does it do the opposite so uh, there are words that may be given to a person which might actually uh, take them away from the lord for example uh, if there are words such as you're going to become very rich okay now if it's a genuine word from god well and good but sometimes what tends to happen is that uh, a word like that you're going to be so rich and uh, you you will own all the riches of the land and all now it in a sense exalts the individual it puts the individual uh you know in the spotlight and uh, it makes one feel very valued and precious and uh you know sort of so the tendency is that a person may become very self-absorbed and not necessarily want to trust the lord or uh you know go with walk with the lord so there is a tendency like that i'm not saying a word that you will god is going to make you rich cannot be from the lord but just an example or um, even in the ministry right like uh, uh, god is going to give you an international ministry you are going to be so uh, many uh, you will go and preach on different stages this and that everything sounds very nice but sometimes when these things are not from the lord they can they can begin to inflate one's ego and not uh, lead them towards god so here is the danger so from a prophet's own idea now if a prophet is doing that to get profit you know it's quite uh, sad and it doesn't help the people it uh, actually leads the people away from god and even people sometimes you know they uh, have those itching ears where they want to hear such things that boost their uh you know self boost their self and not necessarily glorify god so when such things happen we clearly know that a word is not you know uh genuinely from the lord it should exalt god it should help me to live a life which is full of the uh fruit of the spirit uh full of the power of the spirit and you know walk in the character of god now next thing is does the spirit bear witness to the prophecy we also have mentioned earlier that the holy spirit he bears witness with our spirit so how can we get the message of the witness we will have a sense of peace a sense of comfort a sense of confidence assurance in our inner man or in our heart which will tell us that this word is from the lord and we can take it forward but what to do if we are hearing a prophetic word and there is a sense of unrest we feel like something is wrong it sounds really good but uh, you know something is really really wrong then we have to test it out okay uh, and uh, we have to uh, take some time to actually evaluate the prophetic word and act on it so don't immediately act on it you can wait to check it out so this is another thing we have to wait for the inner witness of the holy spirit um sometimes some prophecies are very drastic uh like you know they talk about uh, uh location change or they talk about a career change uh, particularly these kind of prophecies you have to be even more careful because it's asking us to change the course of our uh, life or change the direction of our life now if we don't test and we take the step it can be dangerous okay so that is why what is the holy spirit saying are you feeling peace about what uh, what is being spoken to you are you willing to make the big decision based on you know uh, this prophecy and and all that so you have to check really what is the holy spirit saying to me now uh, what are other things that will help us identify whether a word is from the lord uh, we can also check if it is in line with the overall plan and purpose of god for our lives so for example you know if uh, i was just talking about that prophetic word where you see a man you see a musical note and that person has no ability to sing or play an instrument and uh, the prophet says something like go join music school learn keyboard uh, learn vocals so what's happening you know there is a course 
uh, uh, that God is taking this person on, and maybe they are meant to be in the business of musical instruments, and their expertise is, uh, you know, managing resources, managing people, making a business thrive. Now, if they their entire life, that's what they've done. Now, a prophet comes and says, "Go learn music." What's happening is. It's not in harmony with the overall purpose of that person's life, because what are we asking them to do? We're asking them to make a U-turn, like complete. I'm not saying that such prophecies, you know, uh, uh, can't happen, but there'll be some connection to what the person can do or what the God has done in that person's life for 40 years, 50 years. Now suddenly coming and saying something that is you know, totally off may not actually be a prophetic word. It may not fit because we are asking them to change the direction of their life. So that's another uh, thing that one must be concerned about. Usually God doesn't work like that because you know he doesn't create confusion lead you in one path for whatever 30 years 40 years give you so many uh, prophetic words regarding that purpose grace uh, and the gifts in line with that purpose so everything is aligned now suddenly leave everything and do something else how can that be a prophetic word so even if a prophet comes in and speaks to us like that we have to check because you can't just leave uh, uh, all that God has been doing in your life for uh, all along. Now, another uh, important question we would ask is two or three witnesses. So what is this? Initially, of course, the word of God, does it agree with what is being uh, spoken? Do I have an inner witness Okay, within me? Now, in addition to that, we can go and check with a pastor, a mature person, uh, and, and you know, uh, do other things to actually test it out. But at least you know, it should be aligned to the word of God. It should be uh, in line with what the Holy Spirit is speaking to us. So that is two or three witnesses. So this is in line with testing the interpretation which we have received. Uh, so uh, I hope that's okay. Uh, any uh, questions right away regarding this matter? So this was about interpretation, understanding and testing the prophetic word. OK, I think uh, it's quite uh, clear. Now let's look at application. Uh, how do we go about applying the word? So as I stated, uh, when we prophesy, we prophesy in part. So everything doesn't get said. Let's say we have told someone that you are going to have a successful business. So now successful business means that God will also take this person through a journey of rigorous preparation, equipping, training uh, in order to fit into that place of running a business. Now, once the person is there, it's going to require hard work, labor, discipline, again, you know, uh, uh, some more training, acquiring knowledge, skill, experience. So there are so many other things which have not been said by the prophet or the prophetic word, but they are necessary. So when we Try to apply what God is saying. Okay, I'm going to raise you up as a mighty minister. It is not independent of many other things that the word of God says. We know these are all principles from God's word only, where one needs to be diligent. The hand of the uh, diligent will rule, the Bible says. So uh, uh, that's how we apply it. Okay, that's how we apply it. We must be ready to go through everything pertaining to the fulfillment of that prophetic word. So uh, the person has to take tremendous responsibility uh, to fulfill that prophetic word. Yes, it God will God will lead us towards it, and it is his responsibility to uh, fulfill, but then there is a responsibility from the side of the person 
also now uh, of course the person who is releasing the prophetic word uh, must also take up responsibility to be as accurate as possible so when they are uh, accurate then a lot of the uh, issue is solved because there is accuracy in what is being spoken now another thing that we must understand is that uh, while we apply the prophetic word all prophetic words are conditional all personal prophetic words are conditional let's put it that way so what does that mean it simply means that uh, if god is saying something right like we we've, we've said okay you will be successful in your business or uh, you will be successful in your ministry it is subject to the responsibility of the individual as well so a person cannot hear a word like that okay i got a word i'm going to be successful in my business but from today i just relax i just like sit down i'm like okay anyway i'm going to be successful in my business so what's happening now the individual is not doing their part because all personal prophecy is conditional it is subject to the obedience of the person the hard work of the person and all of those things uh, and uh, so if the word fails he didn't become a successful business person or that individual didn't become a worship leader or that person did not raise a thriving church is it god's fault no was the prophetic word genuine yes we have tested it and we've noticed uh, that a prophetic word is genuine why didn't it happen because there is a part for the individual to play there is a condition that's why we are saying it is conditional so all personal prophecy is conditional god has the intention and he communicates it to us but if i don't take it up then the prophetic word will not happen okay so that also we must remember uh, so that is uh, you know in in our understanding of the application of the prophetic word okay so some more insights regarding the prophetic word what to do now prophetic word has come what do we do with it first of course is to believe it remember second chronicles 20 20 believe in the lord your god and you shall be established believe his prophets and you shall prosper so this whole believing happens after we have tested out whether it's a genuine word or not now i know it's a genuine word what should i do believe yes like mary may sound impossible how can it happen but believe it that's how we uh, accomplish things in the kingdom of god believe it second god expects us to obey his word he expects us to uh, fulfill the word which he is speaking to us so walk in it okay so have a response to the prophetic word act on it then uh, uh we may need to use the prophetic word in spiritual warfare so one needs to pray it through in other words because that's what paul taught timothy now we all receive prophetic words but we just forget about it or it's it's a feel good we feel good ha ah, god said that he will he will uh, connect me to a you know a minister of god and we are going to work together. and we just leave it we forget about it yes god said forget about it but paul told timothy you wage you know a good uh, a warfare you fight with the prophetic word so when we start to pray the prophetic word through what happens we are working towards the fulfillment of the prophetic word so that is our responsibility do you have a prophetic word pray about it pray it through because uh, that is also something that god expects so we believe we act we pray and we understand that for ev the fulfillment of every prophetic word there is a due time so uh, things may not appear immediately after the word is spoken so one may have to wait on the lord and it's only god according to his plans and purposes who knows the duration uh, of the time which is required 
for that prophetic word to be fulfilled. So we really have to trust God. So uh, uh, seeing the fulfillment of a prophetic word is a faith journey because we believed. Now we are holding on. We are trusting God for the due time of its fulfillment. So a little bit more about praying a prophetic word through. There is an example given in our notes about Daniel, uh, how he knew the timing of uh, the, the release uh, from Babylonian captivity of his people. And so he knew that this word was already spoken over his community and his nation. Uh, and you know, when we know that huh, this is the time, it's going to happen. We can just sit down and wait for it to uh, come upon us. But Daniel did not do that. In Daniel chapter 9, verses 1 to 3, he prays diligently towards the fulfillment of what God had spoken. So intercession. Pray, intercede in line with the prophetic words that God has made. So that diligent prayer is a requirement to see the fulfillment of the prophetic word. Um, then we go through the necessary process. This I've already said, you know, there's all, the whole human element of taking responsibility because every personal prophecy is conditional. And uh, there are some areas which are not addressed. Obviously, you know, we've said that only a part is revealed in the prophetic word. And the other things are also important. Uh, like you could uh, say, uh, for example, uh, uh, there's a prophetic word. And in that prophetic word, uh, the, the prophet is only addressing ministry. Yeah, and saying, oh, ministry will be like this. God is uh, strengthening you in certain uh, spiritual gifts. Uh, you will minister with the anointing of the... They never mention anything about, let's say, the individual's marriage or uh, their family life. Now, I cannot disregard other areas of my life thinking God is only speaking about ministry. Only ministry is important. No, I need to know that every part of my life is important before the Lord. Yes, right now, for whatever reason, God has put the focus on my ministry. But that doesn't mean I hold everything else loosely. I must ensure that I am, you know, walking uh, with integrity as far as my family life is concerned, as far as, you know, uh, other things, my personal finances. So all those areas, God is not speaking. Maybe every time I go to a prophet, he's only saying ministry. God is going to bless you in your ministry. God is going to bless you. In your... But areas which are not addressed are equally important. Now, why is it that the prophetic word is not coming regarding those matters? We don't know. Why is God highlighting only ministry? Maybe he wants us to uh, you know, pay attention and build faith in that particular uh, area. So that's why he's highlighting it. But don't neglect other areas because that is also important. So these are some insights that will help us while we apply the prophetic word. So now let's talk a little bit about the timing of personal prophecy. Okay. So uh, we've already mentioned that there is a due time, God's due, due time. How much time <laughs> because we are in a very uh, you know like a microwave generation quick quick to put it in we want it now uh, or we want it yesterday so that's how uh, our world works and so waiting is not the easiest thing for us as uh, uh, people in general and you know and god's people in particular so due time how much time will it take for the prophetic word to be fulfilled so God's way of looking at time is very different from our way. Now, when we read about uh, Jesus and his birth in Galatians 4.4, 4, it says that Jesus, you know, he was made manifest uh, in the fullness of time, the fullness of time. Okay. So when was this fullness of time? It was so many 
you know thousands of years after uh, uh, the creation of the world so in genesis 3 uh, 15 i think 15 16 there we already read how god said that you will crush the head of the your seed will crush the head of the serpent so he's talking about the lord jesus 4000 you know years ago jesus was was introduced he was spoken of uh, he was prophesied about but not until what we call the kairos or the fullness of time galatians 4 4 says four thousand years later jesus came so i'm not saying that every word that god has spoken to us will take four thousand years to be fulfilled but you see there is a timing of god and that's why i'm saying it's a faith journey to see it fulfilled even in the life of abraham you know, if you take it up 25 years is what is estimated as the waiting time for uh, Abraham from when he received the promise to when he actually saw uh, Isaac being born. So uh, he had to trust in the Lord and he is, you know, a father, a father of our faith. That's how we look at him because he trusted God and he waited. So uh, we must, you know, uh, understand the prophetic word in the same way now there are passages in in god's word where you say uh, a day is like a thousand years a thousand years is like a day for the lord and uh, certain places for example in uh, revelation 22 verse 12 uh, god says behold i come i'm coming quickly quickly in my understanding is right now it's you know maybe even tomorrow but in god's calculations we don't exactly know the duration so one must wait one must trust the lord and when it comes to personal prophecy in our in our uh, uh, individual lives uh, you know things take depending on the prophecy now there can be a prophecy that has to do with me and so it will be in my lifetime so i'm talking five years 10 years 20 years maybe even 30 years uh, certain words for their fulfillment but maybe there is a prophetic word that has to do with my family or my uh, descendants and so i can trust that god would do it in the generations you know maybe the next generation or the generation after that so prophetic words that have to do with uh, uh, nations that might take some years you know maybe even some hundreds of years uh, or uh, prophetic words that have to do with the church uh, again you know, that might that might be a, a longer duration so uh, we must go by what god is indicating uh, and uh, not so much you know uh, by what we interpret that timing to be and in scripture there is a concept known as prophetic foreshortening and that simply means the variation in time the good example is uh, uh, the passage from isaiah chapter 9 verses 6 and 7 you know there it's a, during christmas we always say this uh, for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government will be upon his shoulder and his name will be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father prince of peace of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end upon the throne of david and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward even forevermore the zeal of the lord of hosts will perform this so as we look at this you know there are thousands of years gap in that same passage that is prophetic foreshortening. It's first talking about unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, the birth of the Lord Jesus. That we know. You know, it happened in the fullness of time. Uh, Galatians 4 4, Jesus was born. Then now it's going off into way into the future and is saying, and the government will be upon his shoulders. Now we all know when the government is going to be upon his shoulders. You know, his millennial rule and reign, which we talk about in eschatology, and even later, uh, as uh, we talk about the white, uh, you know, white throne judgment, we talk about the new heavens, the new earth. So we are going way into the future. It's like jumping 
oh wait a minute you just talked about the birth of jesus and in the same prophetic word we are talking in different timelines we are talking different time zones so can this happen when it when we are uh, listening to a prophetic word it can happen even in a personal prophetic word it can happen one might be addressing a now situation but suddenly addressing something to do with you know uh, the future 30 years later and then the next generation 100 years and something something so interpretation of the prophetic word we really have to do it by the the power of the holy spirit that's when we get it what is god trying to say otherwise if you're trying to just go by our logical way of addressing it uh, we may not uh, you know get what god is saying so you see this is how god speaks uh, and, and so uh, we we should get an idea about it uh, now when it comes to personal prophecy when it comes to um, uh, timelines we usually say don't mention a timeline okay uh so what does it mean so let's say uh, i have a prophetic word and i'm praying for someone and i get a word about their marriage and i say something like sister by the end of this year you will be married or um, uh, a home house purchase i say something like by the end of the year you will purchase a home or in two years you're going to have a, a a baby or you see i'm putting a time to it is it wrong to put a time to it we say in the practice of simple word of prophecy right a uh, believer's gift of prophecy try not to put that what if what if you interpreted it wrong and you share it with somebody so what has happened uh, in 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 a practical way is people have been disappointed by such prophecies where there is a timeline attached in the next two years you're going to get this business deal you know you're going to get married you're going to do this you're going to do that but it doesn't happen and so what happens to the individual they're like why is god not doing it or am i not good enough so people have gone into uh disappointment discouragement sadness even depression because the timelines have not matched so it's best when we are interpreting maybe you know the timeline but try to avoid presenting a timeline let the person walk with the lord now uh, we are not saying that you should not at all mention the timeline there are some instances and we would generally leave it to somebody who's in the office of a prophet or you know who's leading a prophetic ministry to speak timelines but in the simple uh, operation of the simple gift of prophecy better not to touch on timelines okay so all right uh, let's just go in for a break a few more things to talk about uh, personal prophecy these are all very important uh, subjects so that's why i'm kind of doing it a little slowly uh, once we grasp this hopefully the next uh, next week we can try and wrap up uh, prophetic ministry the other sections we can go through a little faster and uh, a couple of weeks in april we can uh, touch upon apostolic ministry uh, you know and, and uh, wrap up our course so that's the plan uh, anyway let's go for a break now uh, 10 minutes and uh, let's come back if you have any uh, questions or experiences to share that would be really lovely okay see you see you at 10 o'clock thank you Thank you, man.